Welcome to The Other Discovery Show, the bonus show to the podcast Discovery Show where every week we talk about all of the other things that we've discovered New that stuff. have nothing to do with podcasts. Well, most of the time. In general. I'm Kirk. And I am Zach. Museums. Yeah, he spelled museums like a psychopath. Okay, so while everyone is social distancing... I discovered that you can go visit historical museums and take a look around, even while trapped inside your home. Once Please again, explain to me how this works. Once again, Atlas Obscura, you that guys, is, oh, you guys are thing. amazing. I I want our podcast to be friends with your publication. <laughs> because can we just be the Atlas Obscura podcast? Please. <laughs> I would do that right now because just... It is just such a great website. It's got it's got history. It's got food. Once again, we are not sponsored. This is for free. I just really love their website. <laughs> no, I, I like it as well. And there is just a ton of stuff that you can check out. So one of which, Museo Galileo. Italian museum is brimming with tools, large and small, that have nudged scientific inquiry along. Wander and look at elegant astrolabes, beautiful compound microscopes, and much more. An Egyptian museum tour, 360 degree gallery tours, Museum of London's Fatberg Cam, and Fatberg, that is such an amazing English word. You know what it is, right? Fatberg? Yeah. What? It's like a giant thing of poop. What? That's like in, that Actually, usually gets stuck in the sewer. No, I, I think you're right. The putrid chunk of a Fatberg. <laughs> That's what it is. Things got really gross really it's quickly. It's not just poop, but it's poop with a bunch of other stuff that like, basically solidifies in sewers and stuff that they have to somehow find a way to take out eventually. Though the museum's expert dried out the chunk. (laughs) (laughs) Chunk. That's the worst. Chunk. And tried to sanitize as best they could. It still went a bit funky and it's... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Uh, So, yeah, it was apparent... Oh, oh, it's horrifying. So it still went funky. It was hatching flies, sweating, and changing color. Okay, I don't like sweating. I don't like that it was it, it sweating. Was, I know, that the wording on that's terrible. <laughs> also, since entering storage, the museum writes, the fatberg has started to grow an unusual and toxic mold in the form of visible yellow pustules. Oh. Everything about that is just, I was not expecting that. I hadn't read this one. I'd read the other ones like astrolabes and like ancient tools and like cool stuff. I didn't... Mm, I think that, the only reason I know what a fatberg is is because uh, Keith put a post in the podcast Discovery Club at one point that was like talking about a fatberg in New York or something that was like a mile long or something ridiculous. I wish I didn't know what that was now. <laughs> I really do. Okay, uh, so we're going to move on from that. <laughs> you can also see the Frick's Garden Court Tour, the Frick Museum. An opulent house turned museum in New York City is stuffed with stunning paintings and decorative arts. University of Oxford's History of Science Museum. Sundials, octants, and a whole lot more. 3D tours. Google Arts and Culture Tours. So basically, I will link this article. There's a lot of cool things that you can check out. You can go to a virtual museum, if you will, while everyone's social distancing. You know, it's one of those things where I'm already feeling it because of... Creator's Cove, and I was just, I was out a lot. I was exploring the area, I was listening to new music, and I just, I've been not at all. Because, I don't know, you, we're just all supposed to just take it easy right now, so I'm just trying to be part of the solution, not Try the problem. Try to be responsible. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's times where you want to just go out. And so, I'm trying to, and if you, we have been live streaming all this week, basically. Yeah. And throughout this time, I've been trying to give people some stuff they can do while they're stuck at home. Because, yeah, I don't want you guys to have cabin fever. I want us to all be able to have some fun kind of mental enrichment, even while we're trying to do the right thing and social distance a little bit. We've, we've actually talked about, <clears throat> theoretically, uh, being locked down would be kind of nice. But then I think about going home... And being locked in the house with my kids with nothing to do and they can't go outside and play yeah. with their friends and they it, 
uh, and, it, and then, then it time. scares the crap out of me. I'm like, I'm ready to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, uh, uh, in, it encourages you to do good at work. No, and I and I, pray that you don't have to not go to work. I've also accepted that if either one of us has coronavirus, both of us have it at this point because we've just been working together five days a week. It's just, yeah, it's just. It is what it is. But other than that, I'm but it's li- just us two, though. Yeah. So like, I'm limited in my exposure to just him right now. So it's okay. <laughs> so we are social distancing. Yeah, from exactly. everyone else from, apparently. <laughs> so hopefully we're good. But in the end, I just thought it was a cool way to spend a little time. If you wanted to check out some museums and things like that, that you can go do that even from your house. There, there's a lot. Like I almost want to like find somewhere that has consolidated all of these amazing live streams because everybody every artist even some of our favorite podcasters and stuff are doing live streams of q a discussions and you've had you you can you literally have access to people you never would have had access to i'll mention this right now we might be looking at exactly what and it's a non sequitur essentially because okay on the pds on wednesday you will hear us talk about people being creative and exploring passions and things like that. And we might see a lot more of that in the next six months because people are going to be forced to spend time and find ways to use that time. And we might see some different things happening. And one of the things that I've picked up from the stuff I've done with Creators Cove is that a lot of musicians have been hit very, very hard by this yeah. because essentially they're, extra income or for the vast majority it's, it's not their yeah. yeah it's not their primary it's income. like our podcast you know we it's our passion we would love to do it full time yeah. no and they would too yeah but it is not putting food on the table for them and they also have gotten accustomed to the i guess you would call it like secondary like bonus income they're getting from it mm-hmm. and they've had two months canceled like pretty much every venue is canceling two months. And so I've just tried to put myself in that position and it's, it's intense. And we're seeing that across the board for a lot of people. And we uh, understand, you know, we hope everybody's doing all right. And we hope that everybody's being kind to each other because this is a time where we can come together. Yeah. I saw a post today on Twitter about, uh, someone was at whole foods and I guess they started a conversation with the cashier and she said, yeah, I go, and cry in my car every single day because of how mean people are right now. And it's just not worth it. It's you know, not. everybody's going through those retail workers. I feel, I actually feel very bad for them. Honestly, they, because of what it, they have to deal with. I, when we went to the store yesterday, I had an existential crisis in the line. And I'm like, I feel so bad for you right now. This line is like 14 people long. And, 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 I feel so bad. Like, Honestly, I was might, nice and I was like, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. I'm, I'm sure it might not be fair, but that is one of my things that if I see someone being a dick to a service worker and like either a retail person or someone they think should be like below them or uh, somebody that works at a restaurant, I lose respect faster than you could possibly imagine for you as a person because of acting like that. And so if I saw someone berating, if I saw somebody berating a retail employee that is literally, they are forced right now to interact with way more potential coronavirus carriers than we are. They're forced to so that you can have food. And if I saw somebody yelling at them, I'd be pretty upset. I mean, it it may sound a little silly, but... They are at more risk than most of us. Most of them for like a little bit over minimum wage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, No, and it's necessary. It's food. No, we have to have it. Yeah. And so that's the thing. It's just everybody is, they are scared. You know, people are scared. Be nice. Be nice. Treat people like people. Just be nice. They're Be nice, guys. They are so crucial to this. But I think that everybody just has to like be able to get along. But we've seen everybody having to change. You know, restaurants have closed here and... There's there's a lot of beaches have closed during yeah. spring break time, and, and I don't know. That's Florida for anybody who's from out of state. This is kind of our thing is tourism. So this is Disney time. This is spring break beach time. This is people coming into Florida, and we've had to shut all of it down. And so there are a ton of people who are suffering, 
And musicians, I hadn't ever really put together like, oh, they also, they'd lose, lose like a part of their livelihood with this. And now they're starting to live stream. And so what I'm wondering is, what amazing thing are we going to see born out of this? Another thing that I've, I've seen talked about is with every sport basically canceled mm-hmm. for now, will there actually be an uptick in adoption of esports potentially and i also have seen that espn's like they're hosting like marble sports and things like that they're they're getting real desperate espn doesn't have marbles marbles they my dad played marbles in the 40s no i'm not talking about like your dad playing marbles i'm talking about like competitive marbling (laughs) i'm just kidding i don't know what it's called i'm just saying like they are digging deep to try and find something to put on sports center because all sports are canceled Sports are I've canceled. I've never even thought about that because there's literal channels that talk about sports 24 hours a day. I don't know how that happens. I think it's ridiculous in my opinion. But now that there's no sports at all, what do they talk about? <laughs> Marbles. Marbles. <laughs> they talk about chess. Maybe finally ESPN I'll, and all of them will give a little respect to esports because it's better than marbles. <laughs> it's, it's way better than marbles. I mean, okay, first of all, I won't knock it till I yeah, try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There could be some kind of deathmatch marbles game for that all I'm of unaware our marble of. listeners. <laughs> for all the marble listeners. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. It, it, um, it might mean something. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's just a, a really crazy time. I will say this. I did hear, I guess it'll be too late by the time I say it, but... Regardless, Bandcamp right now is doing a promotion where 100% of proceeds, if you go buy an album or mm-hmm. whatever else, it goes straight to the artist because it's it's difficult. And so I don't know if that will still be going on by the time this airs. But if not, you can do a lot for your favorite artist right now because they've had to, whoever your favorite artist is, unless they are not currently touring or not currently doing anything, they have lost money because of this. Yep. They have Every lost, artist. Yeah. yeah, they've lost well, singing a lot, performing artist, right? And so, one thing that you can do, and I've seen this through several of the people that I'm like friends with, and I'm talking to them on Instagram and everything, is just go stream their stuff. You know, just support your favorite bands right now because they need it, and they're worried about their livelihood too. But really, it just and comes even down though to- it's free, even though it's a free stream, think about it as a live show and be like, all right. This is a good show. I'd pay 15 bucks, 20 bucks for this, yeah. 30 bucks, whatever it is. You know, think about it as they're performing live for me. I'm going to put a little bit of money towards it. You, you know don't I mean? even have to get dressed. You don't even have to put <laughs> pants on. You can just sit at home and drink. It's perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, support your artists. Support everyone. Let's, we're all in this together. Let's be in it together. But alone. And social distance. <laughs> Let's be together, but make sure you're alone still. Together through please. the internet. And that's it. <laughs> so I have a, a, an interesting discovery that I found this week, and it is Mary Fields, also known as Stagecoach Mary. She was the first African-American female star route uh, mail carrier in the United States, which they go into this long discussion of what a star route is, Apparently, I think it's small areas that the U.S. Postal Service didn't themselves take mail to. So they would have people bid on that area. Okay. So, so it was before it was like just everywhere. Yes. Okay. They would go uh, to so populous cities. She was not an employee of the United States Postal Service at that time, but she was rather a star route uh, postal person. Okay. Anyway. She obtained the Star Route contract for the delivery of U.S. mail from Cascade, Montana to St. Peter's Mission in 1885. And she was a freed slave, which was after, like, emancipation and all that stuff. Um, And what was funny is her character. Like, they talk about her past and where she had grown up and things like that. But one schoolgirl wrote an essay about her for school. And in the essay, it writes... She drinks whiskey, and she swears, and she's a Republican, <laughs> which makes her a low, foul creature. <laughs> Honestly, that sounds makes, awesome. That makes me like her a lot more. Because, <laughs> she sounds awesome. First of all, those things have, have shifted. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, but it's not. Yeah, it's, it, it moves around constantly. <laughs> there was also, it's just constantly The wigs constantly and Tories. Moved. Yeah, it's <laughs> constantly moved around. When she was about 60 years old, 
Fields was hired as a mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service. So she was, and, and then that made her the first African-American mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service. But what I love about it is the reason they hired her is because she was the best at, like, everything she did. It wasn't just, you know, it wasn't, I don't know. It, it was because she was the best at what she did. Because she was a badass. Yes. Is what it sounds that, like. It was. They said that she was the fastest applicant to hitch a team of six horses. <laughs> like, you, like, drinking whiskey, swearing, hitching horses. Sounds awesome. She sounds amazing. She drove the route with horses and mules and a mule named Moses. Um, okay, I need I, I want so much more detail on the mule named Moses. Like, wh- why was he involved? I want to know. I just, I love this lady's character. She never missed a day of work. She was super reliable, and that's how she earned the nickname of Stagecoach because she was super reliable, one of the fastest to hitch six horses. <laughs> she had a mule named Moses. It's, that is a great name for a mule. Oh, uh, this was a little tidbit. It has nothing to do really with the story, but it also gives a little more character to her. Um, Montana at one point, laws really were stupid back then. Oh, yeah. They passed a law forbidding women to enter saloons. Ridiculous. But because she was so good at what she did and everyone knew how she was, the mayor of Cascade where she lived granted only her exemption. <laughs> I, I, I like to imagine that somebody told her that was the law and she punched him in the head. <laughs> because first of all, that would be completely justified because the... It's uh, sure it was a different time and we don't understand it. But the entire idea that, oh, women can't go into saloons, we're going to pass this. We're not just going to say it, it's going to be a law. That wasn't like one guy said it and everybody's like, oh, that sounds good. They, it's a law. They had a conversation about it with all the other legislators in the area and they're like, mm, that's good. We should do that. That sounds like something we need to make legal. That's completely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And I like to think that stagecoach Mary punched somebody in the head and it would be fair. And I it think would that be, would be on brand. Yeah, I mean, it would make me like her even more. <laughs> so that's Stagecoach Mary. She's actually been featured in, de- in in different movies and stuff they talked about. This is a Wikipedia article, so it's it's kind of... I don't... I like Wikipedia articles because there's so much facts, but you have to definitely sift through it to get something that's presentable. <laughs> sure. No, it's not meant to be like a narrative. Yeah. It's meant to just be facts. But, but yeah. It's... Okay, can we just talk about how when we were growing up, Wikipedia was like, oh, you don't use Wikipedia, that's <laughs> I BS. remember that in college. I have read so many, well, at least one, maybe a couple articles about how you cannot just go make stuff up on Wikipedia anymore. You can change it temporarily and people screenshot it and laugh. They hammer down on fact checking. If you do not have a source, it will not be in there. So in general... Wikipedia is one of the better news sources there are because it's constantly curated. Yeah. It's constantly moderated. I printed this out and it was four pages and two of the pages were all of the 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 sources. No, I <laughs> I read a I think it was a Reddit post of a guy who he just wanted to troll somebody on Wikipedia. And so he just wanted to change somebody's Wikipedia information to something he thought was funny. He had to work for Wikipedia for 2 years. Just adding content, being source checked, doing all of this. He changed it. They saw it immediately. He was banned. (laughs) Banned. Yeah, like immediately. (laughs) And so, yeah, it's just really funny. And I mean, our teachers also told us, you won't, you need to learn math because you won't have a calculator in your pocket all day. It's like, (laughs) um, that's not accurate. We do. Be like, my watch, my phone. I can, I can literally, Siri, what is, I can literally (laughs) ask Google, hey, What's this math? And it'll tell me. <laughs> math for me. Yeah, I don't even have to push the buttons anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just funny to see how those things progress. Hey, do you remember when, this is completely random. Do you remember when we were in school and they had those camera or the watches that had a little camera on it and kids would try to cheat with it? Oh, I do. <laughs> okay. We might be showing our hand a little bit here, but did you ever cheat in school? Yes. How did you cheat? Okay, the way that I, I remember I, I got caught and I got in trouble, and it's one of the only times I ever did because I felt so bad. Um, me and another kid, I, he talked me into it. He talked me into it. I swear, he talked me into it. It's a likely story it was, from uh, a cheater. 
It was a um, a spelling test, and we would trade pages, straight trade papers to to grade them. Right. Which was that's a bad that's a bad choice, teacher. Just don't do that. I get it, you don't want to grade, but don't let the kids trade. I'll tell you this: they always can tell when you're cheating. It's very easy. No, we did it multiple times before we got caught. <laughs> so, also, this actually works fairly well if you're not as obvious as I was, and um, you put a C for every single answer because <laughs> a C. <laughs> Can be turned into any letter. <laughs> and so that we, <laughs> we took a spelling test and we both put C for everything. However, you're supposed to be grading with a red pen, and the teacher caught us because we were <laughs> we were changing the C's to D or A or whatever with a black pen. <laughs> uh, That's, I mean that reminds me of literally <laughs> senior year, one of my capstone classes. Everybody in my group was a complete useless idiot. I, okay, so what this capstone class was, I don't know if this is interesting, but it's gonna happen. You would run a fake business. There was a, a simulator, if you will, and you would have to manage a company. Mm -hmm. You would have to manage your inputs and your outputs and selling and all of that stuff. And we were given teams of, I think, six, six to eight, something like that. My team was useless. I don't know how, I don't know how this <laughs> happened. There was not one person on this team. I learned the word shown, which is derogatory and terrible. The guy was apparently just doing college things and just like hooking up with random girls and being derogatory. I don't know what that means. So it, I guess you have to tell me off. Uh, not good. Just... He had a connotation for women that was based on him not being who he was. I don't know. It's regardless, you can look it up. He was an idiot. And nobody did anything in that group. Myself included. It's it's fair. It's <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. It's fine. No, but like I'm the one that had to take the criticism. So at the end of the class, all of the companies are competing in this thing. So there's like 15, 10 to 15 companies, and you're all competing. This mm -hmm. senior year, everybody's about to graduate business school, and you have to stand up in front of the class and take Q&A from the rest of the class about your performance in this. And they want to ask tough questions because they want theirs yeah. to win. In all, no, well, they just wanted to ask tough questions because some of them were tryhards. But like mm. they... Yeah, I get that. We finished dead last, <laughs> like the worst. We bankrupted that company. Our fake company was bankrupt. <laughs> And I was the one who stood up there and took the Q&A. So, yeah, I did some work, not the most I could have done. I didn't do everybody else's work. That's the thing. I didn't want to, like, pick up their slack, you know? I didn't want to, like, do what they should you have done. You want to be an AD carry? No. I, I <laughs> wanted to just do what I was supposed to do, and you do what you're supposed to do, and they didn't do it. So I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Get out of here. <laughs> and so we ended up bombing completely, and I had to take Q&A for 30 minutes about how bad we were and what we should have done differently. And I'm like, everything. Like, there's no part of what you you see the result. It's terrible. But that exact same class, that group that was terrible and just, just the worst, like the worst group project I've ever had experience with, they decided to cheat. And so he did the same thing. Our teacher did that exact same thing. He would he would give you your pop quiz or your your daily quiz. You would take it, and then we'd all trade papers, and we'd grade them. And those idiots would literally not even fill out their test, like their quiz. It would be blank. And whoever was grading your paper would fill in the right answers, and you'd get a magic 100. I was like, you people are idiots. You don't think he's going to realize that everybody's getting 100s all the time? Okay. For transparency reasons, and to also not sound like as much of an idiot as these people... I was in sixth grade. <laughs> no, this was in college, senior this is, year. This is senior year in college, so, um, yeah. And I'm about to tell you why I wasn't as big of an idiot as they were. Because they did that, and I was like, no. It's like, at least give me two wrong. <laughs> like, two wrong, guaranteed every time. And guess what happened? The they teacher found caught, out. They did. all got caught. They had to take like a crazy amount of like bonus tests that were just to make sure they took things, and I did not because I got too wrong on all of those tests. So it's just like you got to get too wrong. 
that's the moral of the story, I think. I'm also really sad that they graduated business school, probably. I'm, I question it on a lot of them. <laughs> I don't, I'm not convinced they graduated. Spe- Man. Speaking of school, I found another great thing. Okay, I will stop after this. But just, I realize what it's like to not be able to go out and like do things and like you're trying to transition into, I'm going to do stuff at home and I'm going to pursue stuff. And mm-hmm. seriously, I realize that I probably shouldn't promote our own show in this show, but I will. Listen to the PDS this week because he talks about how much you can gain no matter where you are in your life if you find like your passion. Yeah. And so there's get a, a lot. side hustle this week. We're get a all side trapped hustle this month. Yeah, we're all trapped at home. Go find something. Find that, a hobby. Go, yeah, go find something that fires you up. Something go start that, your own podcast. Yeah. For real. Then let us know about it. And we'll yeah. review it. <laughs> and it. Yeah, and if it's good, we might talk about it one day. You know, it's it's like, I don't know. It, there is so much opportunity to see what's going to be created when everybody's mm-hmm. bored out of their mind. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm very excited to see it. I'm going to be watching it. But one thing that you can also do when you're trapped at home if you are a history buff, if you like any of that type of stuff, I found a great Reddit thread for a ton of stuff that you can check out. So Cambridge University has put all of their e-textbooks out for free. So just anything from Cambridge, e-textbook, you can see it for free. They said it was down, but I think it's just because they got, uh, they call it the Reddit hug of death, where mm. it just, it gets so much traffic that traffic. it shuts us down uh, initially. 100 free history ebooks from Project Gutenberg. If I haven't talked about Project Gutenberg, check it out because that's not just history based. That's literally they collect ebooks for free. So if you are interested in reading ebooks, Project e-books. Gutenberg, check it out because they do things that are like out of public domain or, or no, they would go They're into in, public domain. Yeah. So they have timed out of having like, a copyright. trademark on them so yeah. or a copyright and so you can read these things for free they have a ton of great stuff project gutenberg check it out uh john hopkins harvard new york public library there is a lot of online resources for history courses there's a lot of online resources for even primary documents so there's one called the 1641 depositions it's the testimony of irish survivors in the war of the three kingdoms held by Trinity College Dublin. So you can, if you are interested in history at all, you can check out whatever you'd like, a wide range of different types of topics from the ancient to primary documents, to videos, to history courses, to whatever you'd like. I will link all of this in the show notes because it's a great time to find something that you care about that you can do in your spare time. It's, it's a weird time. It's a historical time, but we, everybody's going to have a little more free time. It's like forced introspection in a lot of ways. Yeah. Guys, go, go learn how to meditate. Go learn how to be quiet and sit for a little bit. If you have kids, don't do that (laughs) because it's not possible. There's no such thing as quiet. It is not. I will say that the, (laughs) there's a volume difference when uh when the kids are here so kids are out of school but mommy and daddy still got to work so we've been uh trading off who's watching the kids sometimes at the brain and work so because uh uncle zach has been uh scary helping, mason helping with babysitting a little bit uh every now and then here at work and uh I'll have to see if I can grab a video of Mason getting scared that I could put on the internet for you. You guys would really appreciate it, as like as I do. He sits right here in this office, yeah. plays Fortnite or, I don't know, Rocket League or something. He'll blast bleep bloop movies and and uh, beats and stuff. And He is just putting out bangers in here. It, it is... <laughs> And it's so it's really very well. easy to sneak up on him because no sneaking up means walking in here <laughs> and just like yelling at him. He's like, ah. <laughs> so I'll, I'm gonna great. have to get you a vi- video for him. But yeah, I get to be the fun uncle and I get to just mess with him constantly. It's great. All right, it is time for call-ins from the PDS hotline. Oh, I don't. Both of these are so directed yes. at me. Like, okay, it's great. We're gonna go some call-ins because. We had a couple interesting ones in a row, and Kirk can't talk because he's nom-nomming some chips over there, making a, a ridiculous amount of noise. 
but we're still going to do it. So there are a couple people who have been calling in. One person in particular, I'm not really, it feels like it has to be somebody we know, but we're going to find out here, but I'm just going to, I won't tell you anything more than that. Just, you can check it out. <laughs> hey boys, how you doing? Hey, hey, yo, this is Johnny. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you uh, for uh, for teaching me how to cook things on a hoe. Uh, that that uh, that information was amazing, and I've been cooking okay. everything on hoe. Things on a hoe. From now on, and they are delicious. <laughs> yeah, yo, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you guys keep up the great work, and uh, give me some more discoveries of how to cook things. <laughs> So yeah, Peter Griffin loves hoe cakes. <laughs> so we heard that before, and we're and it, it gives you a trans transcript on. And the, it's it's wrong. The, the, so wrong. The translation's bad. And uh, so we're like, what did he say? Cooking things on a and we're trying on to figure hoe. out what yeah, it we, makes more sense. That is it because you you talked about the depression foods, yes, right? And you talked about hoe cakes. That's where the 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 name. First came of all, from. if you ever ever had a hoe cake, you should. They're so good. It's like a cornmeal pancake almost. It's like a not sweet pancake. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. Very mm. good with black eyed peas. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. Kirk's been going to uh, New Year's Day lunch with me for <laughs> several years now. So here is, and spoiler alert, same number. See if you notice a difference. Oh, hey, hey guys. Oh, my goodness. I am so nervous. Hey, uh, this is my different. first time calling. I've been a really, really loyal fan of you guys for so long. And this week, I, I've discovered something very, very special that you guys will really like, I think. Um, and I discovered my voice. Uh, so I just wanted to sing you a little song, uh, and uh, maybe you guys could play it. That would be, be really, really great. Okay? Uh, here goes. Okay. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes to the BDS. Oh, yes. That's it. So I, I love you guys, um, especially that. It's really cute. Goodbye. <laughs> Say yes, say yes, say yes to the PDS. Honestly, say yes, say yes, say yes to the PDS. It's a great jingle. I really, <laughs> got, I really do like it. It's I got that not, catchy factor. I am not gonna lie. The day that we got that voicemail, which was in the middle of our hell week, where it was just so it much really work, really did make my day better. It got stuck in my head all day. Long. <laughs> say yes, say yes. So yeah. That's a that's an amazing jingle. Whoever you are that is sending me random stuff, and I don't know why I'm always mentioned. They love you, man. It's I don't know, but we really appreciate the call in. It's honestly fun to talk to anybody who's listening. It's great. It's so fun, and we have one more, and it's from our friends from the Podfix Network, and it is from Two Girls on a Bench. Hi, this is Trisha from Two Girls on a Bench. Uh, Hello, uh, member of the Pod Six Network. Uh, we are a show that features some kazoos, <laughs> writing, and procrastination. Uh, mostly, we're about uh, how we're frustrated writers that tend to procrastinate instead of writing. But this week, our episode eighty-three, called "Medical Tongues," uh, which will be revealed in the episode itself. Uh, features three writing challenges for folks to respond to. So join our random club, do a prompt. It only takes three minutes to spend a little time writing, get those creative juices flowing uh, while you're isolating. Um, We've discovered uh, the world is our ball pit right now, so why not spend it writing? Just saying. Um, Yeah, and we also feature snacks. Uh, I guess I should have said that first. And I'm Trisha, and Shauna's not with me right now because we are social distancing in our own houses. Um, but we have a pretty fun show, so hopefully you can join us and listen, and we'll play you some songs on Kazoo. Yeah, and take care, everybody. Take care of each other. All right. Bye. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you so much for your call-in. Um, they are a fun show. I have listened to the show. Uh, we have not covered them yet but they are definitely in the docket to cover one of their episodes. The thing is, see, this is something that's perfect for this time of isolation. It and is. And that is writing, creative writing. Mm-hmm. Do some creative writing. No, seriously. Explore. Try and figure out something creative you can do that you enjoy doing because it's the perfect time for it. Yep. You, 
I firmly believe that people can be creative and they can find something they enjoy doing. So it's a great time to try stuff out. You know, it's you got to look for the silver lining, even when it's sometimes rough out there. Yeah. And and also um, for those that may watch this live stream later, uh, I started eating snacks on stream because of them. I got inspired. That's what happened, right? No, he started eating snacks on stream because it's so loud. Every element of him eating a freaking potato chip on here is the loudest thing you could possibly do. So that's why he wanted to do it. He wanted to give you all an ASMR experience that you'll never forget. Or be able, like, I mean, your therapist might be able to help you forget it one day, but not soon and not cheaply. All right. So my <laughs> last discovery uh, is has something to do with a snack in a way. Um, it has to do with candy. Zach, I'm not going to lie. Zach helped me find this. I have fallen head over heels into this rabbit hole of watching videos from this channel. But it is a channel called Public Display... Uh, no, called Lofty Pursuits. Okay. it's There's multiple names. There is. No, and you're right. They're, I think their videos are called Public Displays of Confection, right? I don't know. I think it's yes. You're right, but it the the logo is public displays of confection. The name of their channel is Lofty Pursuits. L search either of those things. You'll find it, and you'll find it. And what this is is it is a candy store mm -hmm. in Tallahassee, Florida, mm -hmm. that makes handmade candy with very ancient equipment old school styles and i mean you see them making hard candy on this like metal table that is like cooled and it's it's oh it's so cool they take these long things of candy and they'll make a design and it does not look at all like the end product yet watching them put it together to make like a tiny candy that's like the size of a dime with like a rose in it or something you're like there's no way that's going to turn out and then they they make it and they like stretch it out and they let it cool and get hard and then they chop it into little pieces and it's a uh, it's amazing let me <laughs> I had to resist <laughs> oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't even you just I tried so hard. <laughs> I, I got, was fine, and then I saw you break, and I, I, I got, couldn't. I got so far. But in the end, it didn't even matter. But <laughs> I will tell you this right now. They do videos called Drop Candies, and that's a lot of times what you're talking about, like yes. the old ancient ones. There are few things as satisfying as watching through to the end because it's called drop candy because they literally throw it on that table and it explodes into a billion pieces of the candy they want. For the last discovery of the week, I have a new Creators Cove episode to recommend to you. Uh -oh. And it's not my newest, but it's also something you may have heard before. But this is a special band to me because it is the band Vacationer. And this is the lead singer of the starting line you guys might know. From a very early high school. I remember for that us band. at least. Yep. And he has started another band called Vacationer. And when I talked to him on Creators Cove, I was like, hey, would it be okay if I used your music as my intro, like my theme song for the show? He's like, yeah, man, that's fine. And it's literally the, sh the song that I recommended before on this show. It's Treat by Vacationer. Mm -hmm. It's been on this podcast before, and that is literally my theme song now. But I won't recommend that again. I would check out all of his social medias. We'll throw it in the, in the show notes. But check it out because, seriously, musicians are kind of hit hard right now. Check out any, anybody you really appreciate as a musician – try to find a way to support them. They're struggling right now. And he is probably going to start trying to find a way to live stream. And he has a podcast. He has a bunch of cool stuff going on. But the song that I'm going to recommend for this one, our discovery of the week, is called Tape Deck. Tape Deck. Thank you so much for listening. And Don't we forget talk to, to you. rate and review the show on definitely that Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. 
to get yourself a free t-shirt and enjoy do it tape deck bye vacationer thanks for listening bye guys stay safe